We have Yihir Lu from Cardiff University, who will be talking about memory performance in a network trained with generative replay. Uh, the floor is yours, Yihir. Cool, let me share my screen. You can see it, right? Okay. So, hello, everyone. I, I'm Yihir. Uh, I'm a postdoc from the NAPS lab in Cardiff University. Our lab focuses on sleep research. Uh, we believe sleep is crucial for memory, learning, task solving, and so on. And I study sleep with computational models. Here I'll be talking about memory play in an artificial neural network. Uh, given the time limit, I'll be skipping a lot of the details, so do leave any questions or comments. Um, okay. Yeah. So, Briefly speaking, there's a huge problem called catastrophic forgetting in artificial neural networks, which is not human-like at all. To overcome it, we use replay. Here, replay is used in a restricted Boltzmann machine. As a result, we see not only replays can prevent catastrophic forgetting, but also can replace with low quality. And uh, note our model is very simplified, abstract, and high level. It is somewhat comparable to real humans, perhaps in terms of uh, the neural population activities and the test performance, but not in all aspects. I'll skip the comparisons and I'll skip all the mathematical and algorithmic details, but we can discuss them and I do have these slides. Uh, first of all, what is um, an RBM or a restricted machine consists of uh, these binary neurons. Uh, and they, there are two groups of them. The visible neurons see data directly, while the hidden ones don't. Uh, these weights between uh, visible and hidden neurons are symmetric, and there are no connections within the group. Uh, one major property we like about an RBM is the generative ability, which essentially means the RBM is capable of predictive coding. Uh, after learning, it can generate Pat, uh, patterns similar to uh, training uh, samples on its own. And in fact, even during learning, the learning rule it used uh, called uh, congestive divergence, it uses data from two different phases to update weights. The first phase is data-driven when the RBM sees the real data, and the second phase is model-driven when it generates some pseudo data. The RBM can, can contrast these uh, two phases and updates its weights proportional to the differences. So RBM are very useful and have many applications, but uh, like many other artificial neural networks, they suffer from catastrophic forgetting. The problem is basically referring to the extreme case of the stability plasticity dilemma. When the network starts to learn a new task, its memory traces of old tasks could be erased rapidly and entirely. There are different ways to deal with the problem and we use memory reply. Uh, an idea following the theory of complementary learning systems. In our setup, the RBM needs uh, to learn 10 uh, classes of patterns, class by class, in an incremental way. So to avoid catastrophic forgetting, whenever the RBM is seeing the training samples from the new class, it, see, it learns from replays too. Roughly speaking, there are two replay types, experience replay and generative replay. With experience replay, the RBM revisits past data in its exact form. So there must be a memory storage independent of the network. This approach has been widely used uh, in machine learning uh, where people are less concerned about data storage, but it's not biologically plausible as it requires the storage to increase without bound. A modified way is to set up uh, some upper limit for the memory storage. Or by generating replay, we can get rid of the storage and generate data by the RBM. Both experience replay with finite memories and generative replay allow for continual learning to some extent. Uh, the model will still forget memories with replays, but in a graceful manner, much more human-like. And we are mainly investigating these two approaches by simulations. And now I'll show you some uh, plots. So here you can see uh, the blue curves are for experience replays and orange ones are for uh, generative, generative replays. The sorted curves are the test performance after learning each new class, and the dashed curves with triangle and circle markers are two measures for replay pat patterns. Uh, from left to right, the number of replays is increasing, 
Uh, for generative reply, the RBM generates 1, 10, 100 patterns while learning each new class. Uh, for experience reply, this number is the upper limit for the memory storage. We can clearly see the reply number modulates the test performance in both generative and experience reply. Uh, the two quality measures are accuracy and the diversity. The accuracy will be high if the individual replayed patterns are very similar to some original training pa uh, patterns. And the diversity will be high if the replayed patterns evenly belong to all the 10 classes. Uh, as experience replay gives original samples, the accuracy is always high, uh, while the diversity is controlled by the replay number. In contrast, generative replay always yields relatively inaccurate patterns, although the diversity is high when the replay number is low. Uh, comparing the two types of replay, we can see experience replay is always better and uh, can reach near uh, perfect performance when the replay number is high. This is not surprising as both accuracy and diversity of the experience to play is quite decent in this case. Uh, however, in generative replay, although the accuracy keeps de decreasing due to the network learning more and more classes, its diversity grows high and the performance is also pretty good. This agrees with a recently developed theory that low quality replays are good enough for maintaining old memory traces as long as each memory is replayed. By the way, here we also distinguish visible replays on the top and hidden replays on the bottom. Uh, in generative replay, this simply means the layer initiating the replay, and the experience replay, this means which layer the memory storage is attached to. Uh, here we don't see a big difference between these two types, but depending on the parameters, distinct uh, behaviors can be seen. Uh, I will not go to the details, but uh, I'm happy to discuss more if you are interested. Uh, to wrap up, uh, the take home message is basically by mimicking memory replay in human brains, even replays of low quality can help artificial neural networks prevent uh, catastrophic forgetting, making the learning and the forgetting more human like. So, we think this model is also pretty good for studying memory play in human brains. Uh, that's the end of my talk. Here are some references. Uh, you can find these slides online by scanning this QR code. You can reach my, me via, uh, via this uh, Gmail address, or you can run. All my simulations using the code here, Python code. Uh, and uh, I'd like to thank the organizer, organizers and thank you for listening. So, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Yihu. Um, that's the applause that you would have received from attendees if this were a like, real live uh, talk. But unfortunately, this is the best we can do right now. Um, so just wanted to let the attendees know that you can always ask ask question in the Q&A box or you can come on the screen. Um, in the meantime, when as people are preparing their questions, uh, I'd like to have uh, a much. Sure. Should I stop uh, screen sharing? Um, sure, you can stop it. If you... Sure. Um, How like... do I stop it? Okay, I see. Yeah. I have a general question about uh, like what is the overall goals of this type of work? So do you want to understand how memory works in general, or do you want to have a tool that we could use, say in uh, applications uh, in uh, like say for uh, general applications? Yeah, it will be more about understanding uh, real biological replies. Uh, it will be ideal if, uh, as a side project, we, we, make, we make up something and invent some uh, good tools uh, to be used in uh, artificial neural networks as well as applications. Because uh, you know, as the data grows exponentially in these days, even machines need to uh, consider uh, the limit for memory storage. Uh, but uh, but uh, we, as a lab, we are more concerned about uh, replies in human brains. And we right. want to, yeah, want to uh, fit it maybe with some human data. Yeah. Okay, so in that case, um, what you're showing, I mean, as long as the general principles seem to be matching what how the human brain works, the performance is not like as long as it kind of matches human performance, it should be fine, right? So even though the generative replay seems to perform poorer. We know from human studies that human memory is not that reliable, right? 
So in that case, would you say like this is more up closer than when you say like the experience replay? So I would uh, I would argue like uh, experience replay is something like you you take a note when you are listening to a to a lecture. So so you kind of uh, take the exact copy of what the lecturer put on the board on the slides and. Uh, when you do the when before the exam, when you do do your revision, it's really good to have these exact details. And uh, comparing to just relying on your own memory. So, uh, so but uh, within the brain, I don't think there's some place like you know like a computer hard disk that you can write the exact binary patterns in that. So actually. We have to rely on generated replay in one way or, or the other, and uh, that's why I th I I think this project is really valuable because uh, I'm really aiming at understanding uh, human memories. Okay. Yeah. 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 I agree. Um, I mean, given the interest in improving our human intelligence by some like very famous people. Who are trying to build companies based on that? Do you think this would be useful at some point in that aspect? Like, would you be able to improve? You mean improve human intelligence? Yeah, like say you have an artificial implant that has this algorithm or this kind of approach. Like some kind of uh, brain machine interface. Yeah, like a memory enhancer. Yeah, I would vote for it. I, I would put my bet in it. I, I would say. Yeah, I, I think uh, the 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 kind of cyberpunk style thing would uh, come to true before we really understanding the brains. Because yeah, okay. I, I see more development and understanding in artificial intelligence, and I I think uh, machine learning can yeah, machine. I think machines can can really uh, be trained and they can kind of understand our signals, but it is really hard. To kind of plugging a USB disk into my brain, and uh, suddenly I can recite all um, Shakespeare's books. Uh, that that would be Very insane. Hard. Yeah. And I just want to let the panelists know if if you have any comments or questions, please unmute yourself and ask the question. So yeah. Um, if we don't have any more questions. Um, uh, Thanks again for the fascinating talk here. Um, uh, we'll move on to our uh, next speaker.